sen kun tuolla on ylävalitus. Toiseksi viimeinen, kolmanneksi viimeinen kohta on ihan ylävalitus. Aa, ah, just okei. Okay. Okay, welcome to Assembly 2009 Summer Seminars. And we have our Saturday's uh, second guest here, and he is Jonne Valtonen, composer. Let's give him a big applause. Don't forget to mention it's called Preble Motion. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, my name is Jonne Valtonen, as she nicely mentioned, and I've been. Uh, doing uh, electronic uh, music for at least forever. <laughs> and uh, as Peter here mentioned, um, I worked in, uh, in this uh, somewhat famous uh, demo group called Future Crew as a Purple Motion, and I composed with uh, Peter Haipa, called Skaven, um, a lot of the music for the demos back then. And uh, that's basically my history. I've, I've very much been interested in music and composition and sound. And uh, after the demo scene years, uh, people started to form game companies and such. And uh, I was asked to uh, do music for some of the games. And, and that's how it sort of went from there. I, I made my own company, uh, which did music to several games and uh, and I was quite happy we were building our studio and such and uh, when came this time that I noticed that a lot of a uh, uh, lot of game music was going to a, a cinematic kind of mu movie kind of music and I was a bit uh, stressed about it because I didn't have the experience to do it any kind of this kind of huge orchestral stuff so I apl applied to Tampere where uh, I got in and uh, studied composition for six years and orchestration and uh, and uh, basically it was mostly modern stuff but we did a lot of traditional music also and I also did while uh, studying there I did a lot of orchestrations as arrangements for play symphonic orchestra tour if somebody knows uh, it's it, it's this game music kind of tour that goes around the world. I did some of the arrangements there, and uh, I've done arrangements for Sega and Namco and Nintendo, I think, and there's a lot of different things I did while, while I was studying, so I, get, uh, I got uh, quite a nice, uh, quite a nice um, uh, hands-on experience for the orchestra while I was studying, and I I went with my composition teachers, the scores, even though they were very uh, different than what they were used to. But that's how I got into this point, that uh, I got an agent who, who uh, basically uh, does these kind of concerts and, and tries to find uh, different companies that, uh, that uh, need uh, symphonic orchestra m music, or, or at least uh, if they want something that somebody does, and then I'll just arrange it and orchest orchestrate it for the or orchestra. So this is how, how I got here, <laughs> basically, just to got that done. And I think, uh, I think this, uh, this following sound snippet tells more than about this seminar than I could perhaps say in words. So my seminar is about this uh, uh, Symphonic Sage concert that was held in Cologne last year. 
and it was dedicated to the music of Chris Hulsbeck. I arranged and orchestrated. I, I, I arranged 11 of the 13 pieces. Well, I would. Um, I would like to clear out a bit about the terminology because that's the biggest issue when working with different clients. Usually, uh, usually, are uh, everybody are not on the same page. Although you you normally would think that if there is a composer, he or she would know these things, but it's not always the case. And of of course, there's producers on the middle who get everything confused. So, <laughs> so it's very it has to be very clear what's this uh, terminology things for different things while doing this kind of work means. So if we start from backwards, we have this uh, composing, arranging, orchestrating, uh, orchestrating and instrumentation. Uh, we have these kind of uh, words that are often uh, described uh, or often asked from me, like could you arrange or could you orchestrate, could you compose, and uh, most of the time people confuse orchestration with ar arranging. So if we, if we take from backwards, instrumentation really means just that a lot of the time, sorry, I'm, I've just got one cup of coffee, so I'm a bit... <laughs> uh, instrumentation means that if uh, some composer sends you, for instance, uh, a MIDI file, and you should you'd have to uh, write it down to an orchestra. So instrumentation basically means that you're uh, choosing the right right e instruments, right instruments for the job. I mean, if if there is a beautiful melody line, you could pick an English horn to do it, or you could get a clarinet to do it, or something. And that sort of uh, you're choosing the instruments for for them. Usually instrumentation have been already done. If they, if they send a MIDI file, it's you basically it's already done then. But so it's instrumentation is just choosing the right instrument. Orchestration, on the other hand, is a bit more. It's it's it means that uh, if there is an inexperienced uh, composer who is putting like a lot of trumpets and brass things going on, like bam 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 bam, bam and then he has the main melody on a flute on a low register, which is really, really, really quiet. I mean, it's, it's no problem to raise it from a MIDI file just to put the mixer up, but on the li live situation, it doesn't, you can't hear anything. It's just, you just hear the pam 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 and the flute is doing like. So that's the main melody. And that's when orchestrator comes in. It's his, uh, his thing to say that, okay, this isn't going to work, you, you have to do it some other way. Could we change the, all the brass to like woodwinds and try to have that kind of uh, way to do it? Or would you perhaps want to, do the, to put it on, on trumpets and put the mind melody higher so that it could be more audible? And um, this, is something, this is something that orchestrator does also. also while he's doing all the necessary stuff, the mechanical stuff to write the score. I mean, he, he, has, to, he has to put everything uh, uh, clear to the paper for the conductor and for the, for the orchestra players to see what they have to do. The orchestra players have to know what, what's their purpose in, in the whole concept of things. If they just have like random things going here and there and uh, some weird stuff, it's it confuses them and it, the result is not as good. So that's quite a lot to do with orchestration. Orchestration also means that uh, sometimes I've been asked to do orchestrate like a, there's a composer who composes only a piano no piece, sort of a sense of piano piece for me and I have to put it to a full orchestra. Okay, first I ask them if, if do you want it orchestrated or arranged? I'll get to the arranging a bit later. But if he says orchestrated, then I just try to follow as efficiently the original music as possible to make it the original music as efficient to the orchestra as possible. There is like, for instance, if there is like a lot of you guys play piano, right? Or at least know what it is. <laughs> okay, so if you have pedal down and you're playing this, 
you know that it's sort of a reverb mushy. Then he has to take this into account because in the original music it's written like that. So he has to have uh, some kind of way to make it so that there would be actually a pedal sound in the music. So he could do it like uh, put um, he could do like b bassoons playing the do 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 and have the cellos to divide so that the first cello plays like do and the next cello plays do do and the third cello plays do 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 so it, when it comes up and down you have these small cellos like do 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 and the whole chord is there playing when the bassoons are doing the arpeggio so that's that's one way a very rudimentary way to do this kind of pedal thing and that's what orchestration orchestrator does and that's not arranging it's orchestrating for the for the from the or you can also do it uh, other way around you can have this full blown orchestral score and you have to make it to fit for a piano or a, or a flute or something <laughs> you never know it gets really wacky there what they ask to you to do okay so when we come to the arranging part of things it means that uh, then you're touching the actual compositional processes then your uh, uh, arranging means that for instance in this uh, small snippet i played there was this just this tum 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 thing there uh, so I put a lot of extra stuff there, which in, in, involved composition, compo composing textures, basically. I uh, reharmonized most of, no, most of the Symphonic Sage uh, pieces. Reharmonization means that you're putting some other chords than what's usually there, but so that the chords, you know, like have the same feeling than the original music. So our arranger is actually, he's, he's doing all kind of counter melodies and he can tighten things up and make a different structure or, or like put his own stuff there and basically to make it a bit different and a more suitable, for instance, in my case, to the orchestra. I have a couple of examples here. Um, I mean, this is like arranging. So... Uh, I had this Grand, grand Monster Slam, which was in the, the first piece that got played in the Symphonic Sage Orchestra. It was supposed to be, fr it, it's supposed to be a fanfare, and a really energetic and such, so that uh, when it gets out, people would get excited, and yeah, this concert is starting, and so, so on. But the problem with the original music was that there wasn't uh, too much information in there and the ori original music was in minor so uh, it, it, it's a bit hard to do how you get done it without uh, how, how do you have this like majestic sound when the piece is major and well I sort of tried to go around it I used I tried not to point out the major too much actually uh, minor sorry minor too much and in the end I changed the theme to major, so that's already arranging. But if you want, if you, uh, this is the original Grand Monsters ra Slam, which I used as a guideline to do the, to do the orchestra uh, arrange arrangement. And so on. So, as you can see, if I just take the MIDI file or the tracker file in this case and just uh, uh, orchestrate it to an orchestra, it, uh, it wouldn't be too exciting perhaps. So, I did this kind of arrangement. I, uh, I took all the uh, stuff I thought that was. Uh, uh, important like the dee 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 that theme, I used it, I varied it quite a lot. And actually, 
in the end of this piece, I totally disregarded the whole piece and went to a John Williams kind of Star Wars <laughs> thing. I can, I can show the places. But you know the theme now, so this is how it started, the whole thing. So it's on the percussion, the din, 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 din theme there. I just made this little intro there. So that was um, that was an arrangement already. I, I didn't uh, touch any of the chords too much. Uh, I didn't reharmonize that, but I added a lot of, as you can see, I added a lot of textures. And textures also, uh, by, does anybody do not know what I mean about texture when I... Texture can be like, uh, if there is a melody, I could do like this kind of thing, or pam, 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 pam. Those are different textures. So you have to compose those there too, which people don't realize they usually tend to, sorry, I'm mocking producers, but they tend to, tend to listen to melodies and ignore everything else. Well, well anyway. Um, so uh, everything has to be written down, everything has to be composed, and that's the difference between orchestration and arranging. You have to compose stuff more. And as you could hear, there was also a counter melody to the uh, bridge part, which wasn't also there. I had to compose that too, and so. So it's quite hard. But anyway, the piece goes on and on, and then I get to totally, I just uh, go to a different direction and take the John Williams thing. Hugh Speck is a huge John Williams fan, so this is sort of a tribute to him. That's why I choose the style. Of course, I also wanted to see if I could do this John Williams kind of thing. <laughs> oh, sorry. OK. Interesting. So something. Wrong. So this is a, a, a variation for the team. So this is quite a different arrangement already. Okay, so that what's different between orchestrating, orchestrating and arranging stuff. Um, I could also, I just put a fast, I think I'm very proud of this next arrangement. I just want to play it to you quite fast. So this is the original music I used. This is highly unusable for an orchestra, just to orchestrate. Well, I could have done it, but it not would have been interesting. For the orchestra, I mean. It, it works in a context, but when you take it to a different medium, it's, it's, you have to do something else. I mean, this can't be done too efficiently with an orchestra. All the percussion stuff, anyway, usually, it's not very efficient. I mean, it covers a lot, especially if you're using a drum set or a drum kit there. It covers everything, and the timing is not too tight. OK, see, this is the original. Oh, by the way, with the percussions, when you're doing like this tan tram pam pa pa pam pa pa pam things, uh, uh, sometimes people wonder why it's not accurate, accurate and such. But the thing is that there can be something like 30 meters between players, 
and, and a conductor is conducting here. So this, uh, the co uh, orchestra players listen to each other, of course, because they react to what they are hearing also along with the uh, conductor. So, um, so the time when, when the, it takes a lot of time to co come, come uh, to have a sound from there to there and from there to there. So it's, I'm actually amazed at how tight they can, orchestras can play considering that they are scattered all over the place. Also, if, if you think about uh, like a drum set or drum kit and it's placed somewhere over there, so the balance is, qu is quite weird because obviously you can't put it on the middle of the, uh, of the stage because the violin players would be like, well, uh, I, I can't hear anything and I, I can't, uh, I can't hear what I'm playing, am I playing on tune and such. So, so this is all kind of things you have to <coughs> take into co consideration. And this is also the job for the orchestrator, by the way. Okay, so you heard the K-Max original music. And uh, this is how I did it. This is arranged. I think this sort of reminds a bit like the original. They are playing ce ceramic cups, which are <laughs> different to have this same kind of sound like the original music. So this is basically just orchestration now, what you are hearing here. This is what orchestrator could perhaps do. But uh, as a reference for this piece, I took this, if you know Terry Riley's in C piece. Any, anyone? No. It's basically this boxed in, uh, improvisation that you give to a players, and there are these tiny boxes, and they play just like ta da da ta da da ta da da ta da da And when they played enough, they go to the next box and it might have like ta 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 and when everybody is playing like different times it you will have this different time signature things on top of it other it's very interesting i think but i use that as a reference point for this piece i had the i took the original music all the small snippets from the original music and made these small boxes out of them like like you're hearing here, and there are boxes that go to 5 and to 7 and to 13, and they go, go on their own way, and when they sync up comes the chorus, which is here, and then when again when the boxes start playing, they go on their own way, like here. They are different things. It's nuanced a bit differently. So... Uh, but the melody is constantly there. That's the only thing I've, in, in, in the arrangements I've done, I've never touched the melody. Well, now that I'm doing a Final Fantasy arrange, arrangement, I touch one, one note. I hope Nobuo won't mind. I think he won't. <laughs> okay, and, and also this piece has a huge a long crescendo, so it's just gradually building up. That's the other idea for this arrangement to do. So, I'm actually quite proud of this arrangement because I think I managed to capture the original piece quite well. I mean, it sounds the same. It's a different though, but uh, and have these uh, different uh, small things going on and on. It sort of reflects also. This is from a puzzle game originally, so it sort of reflects that too. So I think this is quite nice idea. I'm I'm quite uh, seldom proud of myself, but this is the moment. <laughs> So this is just building up and everybody is coming here and oh yeah, this is, you're, you're finishing the puzzle or whatever is happening here. Yeah, and okay, so that's about it. All right, but I think that's probably enough about, about the terminology thing. Maybe too. Uh, okay, working method for arranging. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's like 100 ways to do it. Um, uh, just basically how you get the material first. I mean, I could get like a piano notes, I could get a MIDI file, I could get already a somewhat fully orchestrated piece and composed piece. And, uh, but if, if, if there isn't too much information I have to, and I have to compose the textures, I, I usually I listen to the piece couple of times and block out all the things that 
that sort of a, I, I feel that are important. And then I watched the game from YouTube. <laughs> they are great long play versions. And perhaps a couple of time. And then I try to disregard everything about the music and try to approach the thing as my own. That's how, how usually so, solo, solistis, solists do, how they rehearse like piano when they go to play something like Bar Browns or whatever. They, uh, they, t uh, they think the piece as their own, so because that's how you bring your own thing there. So that's how I, I, I do with arranging. I, I disregard the original things. I, I, tr I try to pick the most important, if there's textures, rhythms, melodies, I try to get those and tr then tr try to restructure the whole thing. It's easier for me to do it that way. Of course, I could just orchestrate it and try to do it uh, as efficiently as possible. That's also cool. It, it takes a lot, of, lot more time to arrange because you have to first get into the music first. So after I've, I've just done it, so I just approach it like composing my own song. So it's uh, arranging is highly personal. So you can, if, if you have a, like, if you have take a Final Fantasy track, for instance, and you have different arrangements, arrangements to it, you could get quite different results. I mean, even even for an if you if you ask them to orchestrate, you could get a different results, because that's also a very uh, interesting thing how to do it. Uh, there can be several ways. For instance, just to have like a tutti, uh, like a just to have one note hit, like bam, there. You can uh, do it a million times, and, and they all will sound a bit different and a lot different. I actually uh, read from an interview that the guy who does uh, John Williams' uh, scores orchestrated. They all already, John Williams just assumably writes tutti sound, and they know what is John Williams' tutti sound, and they write that. So, quite convenient actually. <laughs> but he can have the luxury, I think. So after I've, uh, I've taken the whole material in as my own, I just do the song and try to be as efficient as possible. After I've arranged it, I uh, go over the original music still and check if I've missed something uh, that's... Olennainen, mikä se on sana? Essential. Essential, thank you. <laughs> and uh, try to incorporate that too if, if there is this thing. Okay. And uh, uh, challenges of arranging the Symphonic Six concert is that the music was written for a totally different medium. Um, there has to be totally different approaches as, as the ones I, I played to you. You had to think different. You have to think about the, take the, uh, consideration the orchestra side of you, how they play and how they react. A lot of the game bomb coaches don't realize that, uh, that uh, they are actually humans who are playing there. The, it's, it's really hard to do uh, triplets, quintuplets and like all kinds of different time signatures together and have, the all the all and have everything in sync and in time and everything. And, uh, Orchestra, usually if it's a beautiful legato like string orchestra players, they like take their time. Like they don't play it like da 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 da. So that's not too beautiful. Anyway, da 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 da. That's not beautiful either. But but anyway, they might play it like da 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 da. They might take the time, you know, to have the music to breathe. And some of the composers are quite uh, shocked about it because they don't. They already have this. Uh, idea in their head that this is how it should go. And when it gets played, it's always a different interpretation because it's out of your hands. You can't control it. And it's not the computer who's controlling it. So the saying, kill your darling, comes probably for something like that, that you give something off from your hands, and then in it, then it's just Godspeed, and you hope for the best. Uh, conductor has a huge influence on the matter. I've read from, from the forums that uh, people don't really give, uh, they think that conductors are over, uh, overrated. 
overrated. <laughs> Thank you. I have this live tulkki here. So, no niin. Uh, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, uh, different conductors can really have a huge impact on the piece. I mean, uh, uh, the thing what in concerts people see with conductors is that they are just, you know, doing this and, well, not perhaps a bit better, perhaps. And they are giving uh, uh, cues to people to play on the right time and uh, showing tempos and helping them out. And giving the original feel and f feeling the music and trying to be inspirational for the orchestra to for them to play. But the thing is that uh, <coughs> they've already rehearsed the piece. So uh, a conductor is like a producer and a live mixer in one package who, who's um, he's conducting here and uh, and they are people are playing and <coughs> then he might sound that clarinet's louder, quieter, come in there and you're late and you have to be there. The balance of this section is off. This is written poorly, we have to compensate. The, here it says that you have to play mezzo forte but please play, play forte and, and uh, all kinds of uh, markings. There are a lot of markings uh, on, on, the, on the music, so uh, they might have questions, how do you play this, how, how do you articulate, like violins, how do you do this and do that, and uh, so uh, he might have a lot of, st he has a lot of saying what to do, and he also chooses the uh, correct tempo for the piece. So I had also this Grand Monster Slam played before, and he played it like, 20% slower, because the conductor wanted it more majestic. Uh, Arnold Roth played it faster, which is more, sort of a sounds uh, inspirational, I think. That but it's not bad either way, but uh, the thing is that it's, it's also, it's about their aesthetics, how things should play. And if you have like a classical conductor, who's conducting this kind of John Williams stuff, it might, he's, he's different, uh, he's, uh, thinks about different aesthetics a bit, perhaps, or might not think, might, might not be, but I have the, these kind of uh, experiences on the field, so to speak. So basically, basically the conductor is the soloist who's performing your work when he's there. I've also thought about trying to conduct myself, but it's, you have to do it a lot and it takes so much time and you have to be this people's person to <laughs> to be wonderful, so or not to be wonderful, to be like an ass. So uh, I don't think I'll, I'll I, I'm cut to it. But anyway, it's it's nice. I can I can sit back and watch the score and then talk about the conductor, how things should go, and then he goes and tells to the orchestra how how it should go, and he might have op uh, other opinions too, and he might say to me that no, this is this isn't good. This tempo modulation is 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 not good, could we do it like this, and then we agree on it or not. <laughs> Usually we do. Usually I agree with them because if they are happy, they play it better. <laughs> anyway, that was, the, that, that was the challenge of arranging the Symphonic Sage concert because the medium was so different. By the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me and ask anything you want. And okay, this is also came with the working with the orchestra. Some of you might be interested with the recording process of the orchestra. This isn't, hasn't a lot of to, to do with the, uh, with the concert itself, but the recording situation is that uh, I've been recording quite a lot on Prague. They are very cheap and very good. Uh, and the sound stage is quite nice there. They have, I think, the Dvorakal is very nice. Mm. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, if you plan to go there, you can have uh, like three minutes maximum recorded on one hour rehearsal time. That might not sound too much, but the thing is that the orchestra rehearses it first, if it's a long piece or short piece or whatever, they have to take their time and learn the piece and then record it, record it. There are a lot of great orchestras. I mean, they can basically play with the Sega stuff we were recording. 
uh, they basically, it's, it's always the second take or something after they rehearsed it. So they are very quick and they know. And that's why it's important to write for the orchestra medium. Because if you write something that's totally out of their concept, you are losing a lot of, lot of minutes just for trying to explain things and such. And that minute thing is also something you have to take into consideration because if you can't add notes later, it costs way too much. I mean, there was this guy costing, uh, uh, calculating the cost that if he puts a bu pushes b a button, the time this goes from here to a record button, it's, it costs somebody five dollars, <laughs> or if he goes to take a piece, it costs five hundred dollars. So. If you're just like, uh, the music co is going on and everything is nice and then you stop it and, oh, the flute is there on the second beat, could you add these notes there? And then the flute is, what, 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 what notes? And uh, I don't speak too good English and no, the, uh, there's like 100 people waiting and you're talking with the flutist to put a couple of notes there. Even the thing that if there's wrong notes on the score and you want to change something like, if something is like, uh, B and you would like to have it b, b, b flat or uh, H or how do you say? It? Well, C or Cis. There's a Cis note and you want to change it to a C note because it's incorrect. It, it's it's your mistake and you overlooked it when you when you proofread it and everything. Then you have to stop everything and say to the guy who has the wrong note in the score and say that please change the note on that bar and there and there to see it's, it's a wrong note. And that takes already a time. It, it interrupts the process of rehearsing process and it's, it's like, it might take like five minutes, which is a lot. I mean, if, if there's 100 people sitting there waiting, five minutes is a long time and it, it costs a lot of money. So everything has to, yes. So basically, how much does it actually cost to record a single three-minute song with an orchestra? Uh, well, I think th they are recording like in four-hour sessions, at least in Prague, I think. I'm not too sure about... I think it depends how much people you want there. Uh, I think they are taking like 16 euros per, per player, and a conductor takes two or 300, I think, there. But it might be different here. So, uh, so you can calculate from that. Of course, then there's all the studio rental, and you have to have a music copyist uh, who's taking care of all the notes to put all the right music to right people. And there's a surprising amount of people that actually has to be involved in the whole process of recording the stuff. So uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Thank God, I nowadays I have an agent, which I highly recommend to anybody, I can, I can just concentrate on the work and not trying to find a deal because it's really taxing trying to find a deal and after you get one, then you still have to do the work, which is like, <laughs> it takes a lot of time and uh, energy. But I'll get back to you. But you can calculate from that approximately that if it's a three hour thing, one session you record. Actually, you, you, you'd have, you'd probably want to record then a more, something like nine minutes or eight minutes or such to a one piece. I just checked the, all the numbers just like recently, but I try not to be too much involved with money. It's this this Disturbing. Disturbing, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Hmm. What was my... Uh, okay, as you can see, I'm totally confused now. But uh, the thing is, the same thing is with orchestra. Somebody asks a guest question or something interrupts you, it, people go off and then you have to take a couple of sips of mm -hmm. Fanta and reorganize. I still had something to say with the recording process, but well, I hope it comes to my mind later. But if you have any questions, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, you talked about the uh, people that are actually playing the music. Yes. And uh, as a composer or arranger or anything, uh, do you have uh, 
any control whatsoever on the actual people who are playing the music, or is it like the producer who chooses the players? Or it's through the conductor. I mean, that's how you control the everyone there. Orchestra is highly uh, higher, higher hierarchic. How do you say it? Uh, there is the first violin that tells all the violinists how to play articulation so that they would y unify their sound and the uh, conductor is sort of a, the guy who tells everybody what to do. So basically, hopefully producers are out of the picture at this time when <laughs> if they want something wacky, then it might be, that it might take a lot of money. Of course, it might takes a lot of money, then the producers don't object <laughs> if, if it's not done. Anyway, but uh, was this your question? Uh, well, uh, actually about the people themselves. Can you choose the people? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, of course, if you want. I mean, it's your money. You can have your grandfather there to play ukulele if you want to. <laughs> Might not be the most efficient way to like do stuff, but, but it's OK. Uh, usually, uh, orchestra players, uh, also, they appreciate the fact that you have uh, used effort for the scores, and uh, especially for the layout, by the way. It makes everything look more professional, and even I, who, who sort of am a composer, I'm, I played in an orchestra, I play harp a bit. So uh, when I have these modern pieces sometimes, well, I, I played only twice, so <laughs> it's, but I have some experience from playing the, on the orchestra, so. Uh, uh, when the score is, isn't, well thought out, or the layout, the layout is bad. It it's sort of a sort of a you have this blah feeling. When when it looks good and everything is professional, then it's like okay, let's go. And this is there is some effort in this. So I th I think this applies to those uh, guys too. They are like uh, oh <laughs> okay yeah. ah okay. Yes. I think we have time for one or two more questions. Ah, um, okay. Yeah, this is a small one. Uh, the musicians that don't receive music before the actual recording, as I, as far as I understand. Yeah. So they learn it right there at yes. the spot. Yes. So that limits your possibilities of giving something more technically difficult, basically. How do well, you deal with no. that? Do you think in advance because? Well, like if you put something modern there, some more complicated rhythms, then mm. orchestra will be quite confused to play that fast. So it will take a lot of time to learn to rehearse the piece before recording. Yes, this is what I have to do. I mean, and that's part of the job for the orchestrator to do and arranger to do. He has to know, given the time limit, you, you might know that you have, you have to record uh, like three minutes per hour. And then you have to arrange cons taking that into account. But of course, uh, if you pay, um, if you hire uh, like uh, orchestra players that are specialized in something, I mean, uh, for this Sega stuff, we hired uh, this brass section that was specialized in this uh, John Williams kind of uh, brass playing. It's totally different than classical stuff. So they got it instantly, and they know knew what to do. So, so then, as an arranger, I asked them. For instance, that this, these rhythms are complicated. I need very, very good percussions and very good, like, uh, bassoon players. Or I, I'm consciously going to bassoon for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. But uh, uh, so they can hold it together. So that's you, what you have to also take into account. Of course, you can do complicated stuff. I mean, but as los long as it's logical and, the, and everybody gets it. I mean, if it's just complicated for complicates' sake, then it's uh, everybody's. Well, what? What's this? And it, it doesn't sound too effective. Yes. Yeah, we are soon running out of time, but uh, just out of curiosity, uh, you mentioned you have, or at least are working with Nobu Uematsu, and I was just curious. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Um, I, I'm not working with him. He, I, I just have his old MIDI files and I'm arranging them to a new, new arrangement. So I, I don't, I don't have any 
we are not uh, like emailing and come to a beer and <laughs> let's go to a sauna and such. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I've met him once uh, in uh, Stockholm, you know, where we did this play concert, so but that's about it. So have you met uh, Yuzo Koshiro? Yes, I met him, yes. yes. Yeah. He was a very nice guy, as well as Takenobu, Take or Take, how do you know? They are very nice people and very down to earth. Everybody is really down to earth. I mean, if, if you start acting like a star and such, you quickly, <laughs> orchestra players don't. Uh, well of course, they are professionals. They build always, always do their best. But uh, it's discouraging if, if, the, if you're like an ass. But of course, if the music is good, then it's okay. You can be ass. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it sometimes it, that not might be the case. Ah, oh, okay, maybe I'm out of time. Yes, no, yes. I still have a lot of things, but oh, it's in Finnish. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I've, as I said, I'm, I'm arranging the Square Enix Symphonic Fantasies concert in Gern, which is going to be held in a uh, well, couple of weeks, and I have to go back there orchestrating. I'm totally uh, behind of schedule, of course, like uh, all the time. So. I don't know why I came. Well, okay, yes, I, I will see Nobuo there, and uh, I think we will discuss a bit more about these arrangements. He will hate them or not. I hope he won't hate them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and we will continue after 10 minutes.